Welcome everyone. You know, one minute can last so long if you're really enthusiastic and wanting to start this webinar and you see there's still one minute left. So I'm happy now I can uh, give you a, uh, well, say hi and welcome to you all. Um, for the people from the Netherlands, um, I hope this is the last uh, thing you can do uh, at the end of the day and relax and listen and uh, learn something. And of course, for everyone from the USA, um, I hope you had a good morning. Uh, it's really nice that you are here uh, starting at eight o'clock in the morning. And uh, I hope you uh, were able to get your cup of coffee uh, to start the day. <laughs> I'm Rensker for Hult and a uh, project officer at the Netherlands Water Partnership. And today I'll guide you to a webinar. Um, so let's first start a bit with some uh, uh, house rules to say. Um, first of all, please mute your microphones uh, during the presentations or actually throughout the whole session mostly, um, and turn off your cameras during the presentations. So there's attention for the speaker and it's easy to see who's speaking. And then during our Q&A and the networking, then please feel free to open up your video and uh, to show yourself. Um, I, we are recording this session because uh, we want to uh, be able to uh, maybe put this online afterwards to share our lessons and also to look back at it and um, see if we missed anything or we can uh, uh, look back at the questions that, uh, and the talks that have been done. So please be aware of that. So if you want to open up your video during the Q&A or the networking, uh, bear in mind that you may show them up in the uh, recording. If you have any questions uh, regarding to the presentations that come around or maybe uh, other questions that pop up in your mind, please put them in the chat so uh, we can uh, meet with them uh, uh, during the Q&A time. So this is our agenda for this morning. We just had our virtual walk-in and uh, I can see that most of you uh, managed to, to walk in in a safe way. Um, I will start with a short introduction about NWP uh, and the introduction uh, by Jan Top of the Consulate General of San Francisco. Then we'll have a presentation of uh, Edward or EG. Uh, and then we'll have, uh, well, we're supposed to have three pitches, but unfortunately we just heard that uh, Sabine staff is not able to uh, join due to uh, private circumstances. Um, this means we'll have extra time for um, EG or the other pitches uh, and for more questions. Uh, and of course, we will try to be finishing time, have a short wrap up and look back and then still the uh, chat will open for a couple of minutes to share experience, ask questions or do some networking. So we have three presenters then uh, today during a session. So it's at work. Um, oh, Water Policy and Resource Development Manager at the West Basin Municipal Water District. And Grace Louis, Vice President and Business Development Director of Google. And Joe Process will also present. Uh, he's Senior Vice President at Google Engineers. Uh, to the organizations, we uh, uh, were actually this, these, all these organizations signed up for a webinar. Uh, maybe some of them will still come in, but these are the organizations you can also address uh, in the networking chat. So if you see a name that is of your interest, you can just ask in the chat whether this person uh, is there or you can reach out to them. Um, another advice would be uh, for next time, um, if you sign up through this uh, uh, WebEx, you can change your name. So you could, for example, have your first uh, last name and then your company. So it's easier for other participants to, to see you. But a warm welcome to all of you, whether it's in the morning or the afternoon. So I would like to start uh, with a poll, uh, just to see, um, as I just said, uh, who are the people here. Um, and let me just click here. This is a bit to start your uh, involvement. Uh, so I hope you now can see on the right side of your screen a poll, and I'm asking, what is your expertise uh, yeah, in the area of water. Well, I see some of you already started to press something. I took 30 seconds. It may seem a long time, but time flies. Uh, and I see you're actually very good at this. So I see only five persons still have to react. Two seconds, yes. So now I will show you just the results also for you to get an overview. 
So I hope I know you also see on your right side the, the outcome. So uh, most uh, of the organizations are in urban resilience. Um, well, we're dealing with water tech and, and I think that urban resilience is a big part of that. Um, well, this was our first poll and we'll have some others as well. So if you didn't manage to answer now, then we have more questions for you to come. Just have to save something, yes. So the goals for this webinar, well, for us it's the idea to introduce and, and well, virtually match our USA and Dutch participants uh, to share some information on activities for the water sector and learn about doing business in the USA. But of course, uh, I would like to know, or we would like to know if that's also um, why you joined. So here again, I'm just starting your poll to hear, I hope you can see it on the right side to see why are you actually joining a webinar? Five more seconds. So fast. Has to still some answers coming in. Yeah. Um, make sure all to you again, please mute your microphones if you are uh, joining the call. Okay. Yeah. Do hear some. Okay, now I'll show you the results also for you. So most of you want to hear to uh, collect information. Um, obviously some are also interested in the companies. So it's good to hear that we're kind of on the, on the right track. So let me first start a uh, minute about what is NWP, uh, and then I'll give the floor to, to Jan, uh, also co-organizing this webinar. So NWP is a network organization for the Dutch water sector. Um, we are a large uh, network with around 20, 200 members, uh, and we really try to uh, make the connection between the Dutch water sector and the rest of the world, actually. Uh, we're doing different programs and we have specific focus countries, uh, of which the US is one of them. Uh, we support the matchmaking between the Dutch organizations uh, that want to create international impact and therefore we work together with international organizations, companies, government and knowledge institute that want to work on well, water management and well, to try to create a better world. We also organize uh, study tours and support incoming and outgoing missions. And our main focus uh, is on the team's water infrastructure, wastewater and drinking water, water technology, integrated resource management, water and port development. And for example, um, last week we also did a, an update for our Dutch uh, participants or Dutch members about what's going on in the US in general. Um, and also in this case, we work happy together with the, the consulates in the USA and specifically uh, the consulate of San Francisco. About our NWP team, uh, so my name is Lenske Gross, project officer for the USA. And also in this car, Anne-Marie Kruijt, she's a regional manager for the USA and Europe. And Janet, my colleague, also project manager for the USA. So now we will, for this webinar, we work together uh, with Jan Top, who initiated this idea. And I would like to give him just a minute to explain what the consulate is doing and tell the about the MBSO. So Jan, please uh, take the floor. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Renske. Uh, yeah, my name is Jean Top, working for the Netherlands Consulate General in San Francisco. And like Renske mentioned, we, uh, we've been organizing this event together with NWP and the Netherlands Business Support Office in LA. And we believe uh, with the, the three speakers we're having, the four speakers initially, but now three speakers, uh, we've, yeah, we've been able to organize something, something nice. Uh, so if you're interested in doing business here, um, please don't hesitate to ask your questions. Put your questions in the chat bo 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 box and we might even be able to uh, unmute yourself uh, during the Q&A to uh, uh, further motivate your question. Um, the Netherlands Consulate General in San Francisco is actually the Dutch representation um, on the West Coast. So we're uh, trying to connect 
with uh, different networks here in, in mostly California. Our focus is California, but we're also uh, present in the 12 most Western states uh, here on the West Coast. coast. That includes uh, Hawaii and uh, Alaska. And we're trying to be advocates, advocates of DART's expertise. And um, um, I'm, I personally do that on the topics of water and mobility, but my colleagues uh, from the same team are doing um, also are also focusing on other to topics such as health uh, and uh, uh, artificial intelligence. Um, like I said, our focus is California, and uh, when it comes to water, there's quite a good relationship between uh, Danellas and California. We both acknowledge and value um, our cooperation, and for example, last year that has been um, further formalized by the, si the signage of a letter of intent. Um, the letter of intent states the ambition that we both would like to continue and start new collaborations between the US and the Netherlands on topics such as water. Um, next to being advocates, we're also yeah, uh, uh, trying to organize these kind of events, uh, but also sometimes bigger events such as the trade mission I, I just mentioned. Maybe it's also nice to mention that, for example, last week we had our first, uh, and I, th I believe it's the first worldwide uh, mission, uh, which is totally uh, uh, bit, bit was totally uh, organized online and a lot of participants uh, of that particular e-mission uh, were very enthusiastic about this easy way of getting acquainted with challenges here and and yeah that they had the opportunity to exchange their knowledge and uh, get into contact with relevant contacts uh, that topic that the that e-mission was about um, um, uh, smart mobility and e-mobility but you can expect similar events um, on topics of as water as well. And we're also here for your individual questions. So don't hesitate to reach out to us um, and we will yeah, gladly help you further and connect you with the relevant partners. I'm not doing, I'm, do, I'm doing that together with my uh, uh, colleagues at the Netherlands Business Support Office, uh, Peter Post, and he is the chief representative uh, from the Netherlands Business Support Office and Daniela Berda, she's the chief deputy uh, at that particular office as well. Um, and. The Netherlands Business Support Office is there for the, uh, there is solely focusing on the business to business relationship between the Netherlands and LA. So when it comes to LA, yeah, it definitely should be on board. Um, so having said that, and uh, uh, don't hesitate to reach out, our contact details are on the slides, and, but you can also find us on LinkedIn. Um, so you can also send us a direct message on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, Renske, I think back to you for the first speaker the first panelist thank you Jan. and you're right uh, we will start with the first speaker uh edward uh, the floor is yours i'm gonna stop uh, sharing my screen so you can uh, start sharing your presentation perfect we see now your uh, we just have to start An exciting moment. We see it loading. <laughs> yes. And you're still mute. You can unmute yourself. Here you are. You can stop. Well, thank you very much. First, I want to thank the Netherlands Water Partnership, the Netherlands Business Support Office here in Los Angeles, and the Consulate General of the Kingdom of the Netherlands for bringing us here today. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Edward Caldwell. I go by EJ Caldwell, so you can uh, informally chat and ask questions at the end of this presentation. Uh, but I hope to talk a little bit about uh, why you're all here today, because I noticed, and it was an excellent poll at the very beginning, uh, that most people are here because of urban resilience, as well as collecting information about how you can get involved from a technical aspect, but also an innovative aspect in not just California water, uh, but also Los Angeles water. So I'm going to take a look at our local perspective when it comes to water supply, but in order to do that, I'm going to take a, a regional perspective and then drill down a little bit closer into Los Angeles County and more specifically the West Basin service area where I work. So what you have here is the Metropolitan Water District member agencies. Metropolitan Water District was formed in 1928. 
They are the primary wholesaler to 26 member agencies in six counties, serving nearly 19 million people. Uh, to put that in perspective, uh, this, the Metropolitan Water District uh, service area, I believe, is actually larger than the Netherlands population in totality. Uh, but the reason I point it out is because from a business perspective and getting involved in California water, uh, this provides a unique look at the diversity of what Los Angeles and Southern California water is all about. You can really begin to see that the needs of a coastal Los Angeles uh, region might be drastically different than those inland from the Inland Empire, Western Municipal Water District, as well as Eastern Municipal Water District. I'll be primarily focused on the West Basin service area here in orange. Uh, as you can see, uh, it is uh, coastal Los Angeles County. I'll talk a little bit about uh, the service area in a minute. Uh, but I also want to note that it is the fourth largest Metropolitan Water District agency. Uh, one of our directors, Director Gloria Gray, does currently serve as the chairwoman of the Metropolitan Water District. When you take a look directly at the West Basin Municipal Water District service area, the one thing that jumps out at me is the diversity in land use uh, in the West Basin service area. You can see that we serve 17 municipalities being north all the way into uh, the city of Malibu, down to the south, all the way down to the Palos Verdes Peninsula. But then we have inland municipalities, including West Hollywood and the city of Carson. And the one thing I wanted to point out at this is that from a business perspective, it provides tremendous opportunities for innovation, technological advances, and just business opportunities, because you can really see that the programs and uh, water supply diversification needs of a city like West Hollywood, which is highly densified uh, urban population in comparison to the city of Malibu, really provides for an opportunity for all types of companies and all types of businesses to really get involved. West Basin Municipal Water District was formed in 1947 for the primary purpose of joining the Metropolitan Water District. The reason for this was that there was overdraft here in the West Coast Basin and the West Basin Service Area really needed an alternative water supply. To do that, they joined Metropolitan Water District, which provided a water supply from imported sources. So where exactly does our water come from? When you look at the Netherlands, I know that local groundwater is crucial to the water supply portfolio. Likewise, the West Basin Service Area heavily relies on groundwater. And prior to the organization of West Basin Municipal Water District, we were wholly reliant on local groundwater. But as I mentioned, in 1947, West Basin was formed, and in 1948, they joined the Metropolitan Water District to provide additional water resources. This included the Colorado River Aqueduct, as well as the California Aqueduct, otherwise known as the State Water Project. These are engineering innovations that provide Los Angeles County, as well as all of Southern California, the livelihood that we enjoy here today. We do live in a, a desert or metro, uh, Mediterranean climate. So water supply uh, is not uh, abundant here in Southern California. And as such, imported water supplies are crucial to our livelihood and business community. So let's take a closer look at where our water comes from. This, as you can see, is the state of California. And we, as I mentioned, rely heavily on the California Aqueduct. It's 444 miles of uh, uh, pipe and uh, tunnels, as well as canals in order to deliver water from the Sierra Nevada mountains all the way down here to Los Angeles County. In addition to that, you have 242 miles of the Colorado River Aqueduct that was primarily built again by Metropolitan Water District in order to serve Southern California. Without these water supplies, uh, the business community would no longer be here. Uh, obviously, we'd be in Northern California and other parts of the state. Again, uh, the primary uh, uh, reason for these water supplies is to serve the population. And it is important to note, excuse me, I'll go, right, go back here for one more second, is that two-thirds of our water supply in the state of California actually falls in Northern California, while two-thirds of the population lives in Southern California. 
Obviously, that takes a precedent when we talk about water policy in the state of California and really serving the communities uh, that live down here. But with this imported water supply brings a great deal of challenge and, and potential uh, uh, problems for California in the future. These imported water supplies uh, suffer through uh, prolonged and severe droughts. There's potential for earthquakes here in California. Our infrastructure needs are abundant, expensive, and uh, aging. We do have extreme record temperatures. We've just gone through the, uh, the most significant drought in California state history. Uh, this year, a lot of people felt like we had a great deal of snow in the Sierra Nevadas and, and water supply, uh, but uh, actually, we're, we're actually one of our fifth largest or uh, driest years on record. We also have uh, sensitive fires throughout California. And for those of you who are involved here in California, you're very familiar with the sensitive ecosystems, primarily in the Bay Delta uh, estuary, where we have endangered species, and we really try to protect our water supply and uh, invest as far as putting water back into the communities. So what is West Basin's approach and where can you, uh, not only domestic uh, companies and, and employees, but international companies, where can you be, be involved? Well, I'm very proud to say that Southern California takes a very uh, diverse approach to meeting the demands of its communities. As such, innovation and technology are crucial. And I'll walk through the different aspects of West Basin Municipal Water District's diverse portfolio, and the investments that we're making in local supply infrastructure and uh, water supply technologies uh, and provide a glimpse of where you can get involved. The West Basin is dedicated to developing a local publicly controlled water supply. We did create the Water for Tomorrow program to secure our water future. The primary focus of this is to invest in alternative supplies and water use reductions in order to provide future generations a uh, supply of high quality water. So to do that, we look at our current water portfolio. Just last year, 55% of our total demand was imported from the Metropolitan Water District. Understanding that that is not always going to be an aspect of the West Basin Service Area, we have made significant investments in water use efficiency, groundwater technologies, as I mentioned, water recycling, which I'll touch on. And now we explore the opportunities to uh, come across with desalination. So where do we hope to go? Well, by 2030, we hope to reduce our demand on imported water due to the several different concerns that we have that I identified earlier. We hope to reduce this by uh, a significant amount down to 39% of our total portfolio. In order to do that, we do know that we need to almost uh, double the amount of water recycling that we do here at West Basin Service Area. We do need to maximize our groundwater supplies, which does also have impacts on the use of recycled water in the area. Uh, and you'll notice this 11% over here with desalination. Uh, as I mentioned, we are a coastal Los Angeles County uh, area. Uh, as such, we do have opportunities that are no longer uh, available in different uh, communities uh, and specifically inland communities. So exploring ocean water desalination, we believe is one of the uh, true aspects of meeting the needs of our service area by utilizing the resources in our service area. So as with anything, with crisis comes opportunities. Uh, in the early 1990s, uh, we, California was suffering through a significant drought and the West Basin Service Area, uh, through their visionary leadership, decided to invest in a water recycling facility. Again, this, this is only able to be done because we have tremendous resources in the West Basin Service Area, including a wastewater treatment facility in the coast near El Segundo, California, uh, that provides our source water. Uh, in the construction, we were able to first deliver recycled water in 1995 to El Segundo Lakes Golf Course uh, to utilize for our what we would call our tertiary water demand and uh, irrigation. Uh, to date, we've produced more than 40 million uh, gallons per day 
Uh, and actually, just about a year and a half ago, we delivered our 200 billion gallon of recycled water uh, in totality. One thing that makes this facility extremely unique and one of a kind in the world is that at the Edward C. Little Water Recycling Facility, we produce five different qualities of recycled water. And the reason we do this is, as I mentioned, uh, the West Basin Service Area is extremely diverse with diverse water needs, land use, and uh, opportunities to utilize recycled water. So as such, we utilize recycled water for irrigation, for our parks and uh, ball fields, soccer fields. Uh, we utilize it for industrial application, including nitrified water, low and high pressure boiler feeds at the many refineries that we have. We do have several refineries in the West Basin Service Area. And one thing that I think makes uh, California somewhat unique is that we utilize recycled water for indirect potable reuse, the so groundwater augmentation uh, that's treated with microfiltration, reverse osmosis, and treated with ultraviolet rays. These are just some of the many businesses and uh, municipalities that utilize recycled water in the West Basin Service Area. And I'm very excited to report that one of our newest customers is SoFi Stadium, the new home of the Los Angeles Rams and Chargers here in Southern California. So water use efficiency uh, is just as important as creating a new water supply. Any opportunity we have to reduce our total demands and needs are investments that we feel are, are wise. As such, we invest in free rain barrel programs where we actually distribute rain barrel, pro, uh, rain barrel throughout the West Basin service area. We actually pay our residents if they choose to reduce their uh, grass within their yard. I'm sure most of you are familiar that in California, we like our grass here. And so reducing the amount of turf that you have in your yard uh, is something that we've invested in. We have water efficiency devices and rebates, ocean-friendly demonstration gardens, and landscape surveys, which allow homeowners and businesses to reduce the demand that they have outdoors. So as I mentioned, uh, prior to West Basin's creation, we were nearly 100% reliant on groundwater supplies. This brought about several different issues, including overdraft in the West Coast Basin. As such, our engineers seeking solutions invested in the Marvin Brewer DeSalter facility, where we actually take the saline plumes off to the right and we inject uh, recycled water into the ground and actually can pump out potable drinking water. We can also treat our water uh, in order to uh, desalinate uh, that brackish plume. And then last but not least, I wanted to talk a little bit about ocean water desalination. Uh, we've taken an evaluated uh, stepwise approach. We've been piloting ocean water desalination since 2002. We created a demonstration testing facility in 2010 through 2014. And we have just completed the environmental review process which is pretty extensive here in the state of California for a potential project evaluation, which we are now under. So I hope to show uh, a little bit about the diversity of our water supply portfolio and the many investments that we make here in Southern California. And I look forward to chatting with you a little bit about opportunities for you to get involved in the many different opportunities in, in Southern California water. So that concludes my presentation and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Eiji. Um, so we do have one question from uh, Robert Gerard, and he's asking, can you comment on what it would take to introduce a new technology into the California municipal water and wastewater treatment market? So I think that there are several different opportunities for new technologies. Uh, obviously, with ocean water desalination, uh, one of the, the core issues is uh, the energy intensiveness of pushing salt water or ocean water through membrane treatments. So technologies, is re technologies related to uh, energy saving devices and reducing the energy consumption of being able to desalinate ocean water is crucial to our ability to do it at an affordable price. Another aspect here in Southern California is that we've made significant investments in uh, stormwater. Uh, in 2018, Measure W was passed in LA County which actually provides $300 million per year for investments in stormwater capture, treatment, and water quality. In the West Basin service area and the coastal communities, we have very little ability to actually capture that water and utilize it because we don't have any surface storage in our region. However, our ability to capture it and treat it 
and discharge it onto the ocean provides many environmental benefits to preserve our oceans and preserve California and Southern California as a very uh, tourist friendly place to be and an enjoyable uh, outdoor environment. Thank you. Um, now, because of the time, uh, we will go to the next presentation. I think you now can see it on the screen now. Um, if you have any other questions uh, popping up later for EJ, you can post them in the, uh, in the chat and we'll come back to that. So now I'd like to give the floor to uh, Grace Lou, who will present shortly about the uh, FUHO and their work. So Grace, you can... Um... Hi, I'm Richard. Well, good morning to... Uh, folks in California and good afternoon to folks in the Netherlands. Um, I'm Grace Liu and um, I'm the Business Development Director for the Pacific Region for Fugro. And on behalf of Fugro, I would like to thank the uh, Netherlands uh, water participants and the Dutch consulate in both San Francisco and Los Angeles for inviting us to be part of this uh, webinar event. Next slide. So Fugro is a Dutch owned firm. It was founded in the Netherlands in the early 1960s and it's been in the United States since the 1970s. Uh, we are a geotechnical company um, and we deal with the ground. Next slide. Our motto is together we create a safe and livable world because we work with the ground, the ground that you stand on and the, um, the ocean bed, the river bed, and the reservoirs. Next slide. We are also the world's leading geo data specialist. Um, I think this particular um, image kind of show you know everything that you know you will work on that deals with the soil. Next slide. Um, we have a triple A approach, you know, with our clients in design, build and operate their assets safety, safely and sustainably through acquisition of data analysis and we give advice. Next slide, please. And this pretty much sums up, you know, what I uh, previously mentioned that you know, we are into water resiliency, we are into sustainability and, um, uh, and water reliability. Next slide. So this is a slide that shows some of our current projects in California. And since we're focusing on Southern California, um, this is not all the projects we've been working on, just in, um, an example. And I'm not going to go through all of them, but I do want to mention a few. The first two, the DCA Delta Conveyance um, is the, the one that Fugro has a standalone geotechnical contract directly with the owner with DCA. And the second one, Sites Reservoir, uh, is also that Fugro has a standalone geotechnical contract with the Sites Joint Authority. As EJ has mentioned earlier, that um, most of the water resources you know, from California comes from the north. And so these two are the two largest water programs, I would say, in the last few years in California. And they are for water reliability. And the location you know, you know, is in Northern California. But you know it serves water sustainability and water reliability for both the north, the local, as well as all the way down to Southern California. That's why um, I put them up. Um, the Delta is a um, it was a twin tunnel. Now it's going to be probably going to be a single tunnel that's going to bring water from the north all the way down to Southern California, Central Valley, as well as South Cal. And Sites Reservoir is. Um, going to be a new reservoir, an off-stream one, to capture um, uh, excess water during uh, the, uh, the storm season so that there will be water um, availability for both the local farmers as well as possibly in Southern California. Both of these two large projects uh, have Southern California agencies participation. Um, Metropolitan Water District is one of the key players in them as well. Uh, the third one is the LA County Sanitation District, is the JWPCP, is water, water reuse. 
and uh, it's also a large program. And Google also again has the standalone geotechnical contract for the agency for the last 10 years. And not least is the Ventura Water Field Project, which is uh, another large um, water program. It is also one of the many projects that Google teamed with Corolo, uh, you know, who is going to be the next presenter um, on this project. Next slide. So, how do we as consulting firms get work you know, in California? Most of you gross clients, you know, besides the consultants, are actually the public sector. So I'm going to focus on that. We, the projects we work on, they're all infrastructure, uh, wet and dry, and we deal mainly with public agencies. It's a very long process, and I would say be patient. You know, it does take quite a while for a CIP capital improvement program to come about, and there is no RFPs. Hello. Um, and uh, from RFQ to RFP to program design, construction, construction management, uh, the, the whole process, you know, from the conception to actual project being completed could span anything from 10 to 20 years. And uh, one thing I do want to uh, stress is selection process, you know, with um, owners oftentimes, you know, is QBS, quality based selection, meaning the firm or the team, actually, as a team make up of one firm or many firms, you know, that's going to be selected to perform work for on these programs. Um, they're selected based on the qualifications, not so much on the uh, on the pricing, because the price negotiation actually happens after the team is being selected. And very often it's also about the people. Um, we as consultants, as well as owners, we often hear the question is, who are we going to be working with? Who is your project managers? So that's why I put in the bullet point, it's very important that there is the people versus the brand. It's a 50-50, you know, who's, who are we going to be working with on this project? And then you also look into then the firms that these people work for. Next slide, please. So this pretty much sums up, you know, again, what I previously uh, explained, you know, you know, how, why do you grow? How do we get work? You know, it's, you know, the geo data specialists, we have a uh, highly skilled specialist, we use innovations, and we're very, very much client focused. Next slide. So international collaboration, I think I was asked, how do we uh, bring overseas firms in? Um, I, I would suggest to those who are interested to work, you know, with us or in the US, you know, to do the research, find where your niche is, you know, look at all the programs, do homework, pre-positioning to notice to, to proceed for a project, you know, it's a long process, and uh, do reach out. Um, I would like to use an example here, uh, how we have collaborated with an overseas international firm in the past. There's this company called Devico, which is a Norwegian firm. They have special invention, you know, a machine that can do underground coring and the machine will turn, make turns and retrieve soil samples at the same time. Now, Fugro is an international firm. We have worked with them in a large project in Hong Kong. And when we won some of our uh, recent programs, we thought of them and we thought they could be a good fit in one of our projects. So we invited them to come and do a presentation to the project team as well as to the owners. And subsequently, they actually got added onto our, um, our contract. Um, and, you know, the company now actually has a, a presence in the United States. So it is, you know, not a, not a Dutch owned firm, but we do hope that, you know, in the future that we would have collaboration with firms from the Netherlands. Next slide. So this is an example of some of the companies and agencies that we work with. As geotech firms, we at times, you know, could be contracted directly with the owners, and at times too, you know, also could be with a large or, or um, a civil engineering firm, you know, like the one shown here, and will be the key sites. And I think this is my final slide. Thank you so much. 
Thank you, Grace. Um, I think we'll first go to the second pitch and then we'll go uh, to the Q&A, if that's okay. Um, I didn't see any specific questions right at this moment, so then uh, we'll first go to the other one. Yes. Is that all good? I share the content. Yes, you're perfect. I also had the slides, but please feel free to, uh, to share. All right, very good. Thank you uh, to all. Uh, I'm Jill Crozes with Corolla Engineers. I've been with you us. Just have to uh, start your presentation, Jill. Uh, we see now just the use uh, press uh, start slideshow. Mm, thank you for that. Or else, yeah. Okay. It will be even better if you now go to display settings in the left corner of your presentations and then uh, swap it to presenter mode. Else we will see your notes. Your ticket. Oh, uh, I don't have any notes, so that's okay. Okay, then we'll can see it. Um, yeah, so welcome everyone. I'm, I'm Jill Crozes with Corolla Engineers. I, I've been with the firm uh, 25 years and uh, I currently uh, manage the Greater Los Angeles area uh, business units for the firm. So just a quick, uh, a few quick facts about Corolla Engineers. I think what makes us the most unique is we're 100% uh, focused on water planning and engineering. In the, in the United States, uh, but we, you see we work a lot with foreign companies. Uh, we're about 1,200 employees in 48 offices. Um, another characteristic is we're, we have a strong emphasis on innovation and research, and that's what typically takes us to foreign countries to establish um, different contacts, learn about technologies, and uh, be an actor in the knowledge transfer that can take place. So we strive to be the best consulting firm in the United States. That's a pretty tall order, but uh, uh, we do again rely with partnerships with different uh, companies and bring knowledge. One good example, by the way, I'm gonna give a few examples for the audience and maybe they can find uh, similarities in how they can approach a partner with consulting firms in the US to uh, leverage their business. But a good example here is uh, Royal Haskening DHV. Uh, we've worked with them on, a, on one particular technology here called the Crystal Actor, which we've applied to, uh, I mean, it's pretty widely used in the Netherlands to uh, treat groundwater uh, in some uh, chemical softening fashion. And we, we've used the technology and adapted it to uh, concentrate brines from uh, desalting facilities, mostly located inland, and they don't have the opportunity to uh, discharge brines to the uh, to an ocean out for. So anyway, that's a, a couple of photos here of our facility in Southern California and then another one in uh, Colorado. Again, with uh, Royal Haskening DHV, uh, we're working with them. In fact, we have a couple um, research and project development uh, uh, contracts or agreements, I should say, with them around the technology called aerobic granular activated sludge. This was developed in the Netherlands uh, in collaboration with Delft, um, renowned university. And the technology is in the US through aqua aerobics, which by the way, that's a little clue also here about how to promote a company uh, product in the U.S. is to partner with um, other technology firms, distributors, representatives, and, and so on. And actually, I was um, yeah, I was in Dublin with uh, a number of folks from uh, Royal Haskelling last summer, uh, where we visited this plant here that just appeared in the corner, uh, involving a this new technology which has quite a few advantages in terms of uh, footprint and energy um, and is in the process of being scaled up in many applications worldwide. Another example is uh, of, a, of a company from the Netherlands. Actually, I have a personal tie to it. Um, historical uh, is XFlow. 
because my background is in membrane uh, filtration and um, I was working in France back then uh, on a project for a little town in uh, in the Netherlands and uh, at some point of time uh, the, the patriotic uh, fiber kind of took over and said what we're buying membranes from either the French or the Australians and they said no 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 we're going to develop our own membrane and so the University of 20 board and developed a product which again personally I ended up uh, specifying and uh, working the design into one of the largest energy uh, membrane plants in the U.S. in, in Minneapolis uh, for a long time, the largest ultrafiltration membrane plant in the world. Another good uh, and somewhat personal story, I had the personal chance to work in person UV technology and um, that relationship led to some of the early adoption of UV uh, disinfection in the US for surface water treatment. And uh, this, um, this company was founded, I believe, in the 70s in, uh, well, I'll let you read the name because I don't want to butcher it. And uh, what, they, what happened, and it's another hand for people and companies that want to establish in the US, there's some type of validation Awards by specific organizations that must be received for uh, technologies, and UV disinfection was one of them. And so Corolla actually ended up developing a validation center uh, that uh, well, is still to this day able to validate uh, equipment uh, using UV light disinfection uh, in accordance with various standards like the US EPA. Uh, the National Science Foundation, the uh, National Water Research Institute, and so on. And in fact, DG, DVGW is actually a German standard. So we, we validate for all these um, um, according to those standards. And it, it becomes a platform for, uh, in this case, suppliers to showcase their product. Now, talking just a little bit about service companies, I talk about technology companies. Uh, Grace mentioned our collaboration. I mean, Food Grow is, is quite a good story of success. And we work with them typically when uh, there are very complicated underground uh, situations. Here I'm showing a, an example, uh, which is the evaluation of various uh, seawater intake technologies for the city of Santa Barbara. And then another uh, association that, again, um, uh, Corolo and, and I was personally involved in, it, it was the joint venture that we formed with Arcadis to design actually the city of Los Angeles uh, reservoir UV disinfection facility. And we, our JV was called uh, Malcolm Pierney Arcadis Corolo Consulting a Joint Venture. And we actually, the people are to the point that Grace made, had worked together on a prior project for the city of LA shown here on the upper right uh, picture which was also another very large UV disinfection facility at their filtration plant. So anyway, those are like a few examples of a collaboration, uh, both on the, with technology firms and service providing firms. And uh, again, I would extend to the audience, you know, the fact that Corolla is uh, naturally open to discussions that uh, participate in knowledge transfer and also establishing new players and partners in the U.S. Uh, economy. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Uh, I will uh, start uh, sharing uh, my slides again. All right. Um, so now we, uh, we just had the three presentations. So we are open now for, for the questions. Um, I've seen already some popping up in the chat. Um, so let me first start um, with a question for Grace. Um, in what topics of water technology do you see opportunities for the Dutch water sector to connect with your organization? Uh, so where do you see the incoming need or the possibility? Um, I think we have needs throughout from all phases. And most of the time we try to get into a program right at the beginning, so which we which will be from the environmental feasibility studies. So, um, you know, if folks have you know, a specialty or 
you know, reach out to us, you know, and we, we can find out where the, the uh, right fit of the niche is. I would say start early on each program. Thank you. Because um, you also mentioned that some of these projects or like the, the way to the project takes 10 to 12 years. Um, well, for small firms, that's a really long period. So to what extent is it helpful or can an organization like Fugro support these kind of small companies or do you have advice for small companies to to come in such a long process well when you get involved you don't necessarily work on a job for the whole you know it's well depending which phase you're in if you're in the early phase you know you pay attention to when the program gets funded or get some initial funding so then you work on that particular phase and at times, you know, you could be conflicted out to the future phase. So you can get in the early right in the beginning, where it's, it's the environmental side, the feasibility or the studies. Um, then you'd be right there to start for and, and these contracts, if they get procured, it is usually it has a lifespan. And you usually say it's so much for budget and for so many years. And oftentimes it could be um three to five years, or it could be five years, or it could be three to five years with um, the option to extend on an annual base and it could go on to a long time. So that, that's why I say, you know, it, it's not like you're going to be there for necessary you know, 20, 20 odd years. Thank you. Um, but I want to say that uh, everyone who likes to turn on the camera to show the appearance, uh, please feel free uh, to do so. Because um, uh, we'll also see some other questions. Well, First of all, we also got some questions actually from the panelists or sorry, presenters to you, as uh, Jan Top just uh, also said in the chat. Um, they are very interested in us in hearing your experience and perceived barriers to entry the US market. So um, you can already react on this question in the chat box. And for now, I, I would like to ask EG to uh, also answer one of the questions that came from Erin Nabo. You asked, um, what strategies and actions do you have to counteract environmental challenges at the source, like pollutants and climate change, like drought? Well, thank you for the question. Uh, obviously, uh, climate change here in California uh, is, is a significant issue, not only from a policy perspective, but also a legal perspective. Uh, West Bay's Municipal Water District takes that very seriously. Uh, I made a note in uh, the, the chat with uh, one of the questions related to energy consumption and uh, water usage and the nexus between the two here in California. Uh, as I pointed out, we move water uh, hundreds of miles uh, up and over mountains in order to get it here to Southern California. So energy consumption accounts for approximately, or uh, water usage accounts for 30% of our total energy demand here in the state of California. So any opportunity we have to reduce our demand on uh, imported water supplies and rely more on local supplies, we actually see a significant energy uh, saving. So that's just one of the aspects. But also when it comes to contamination and pollutants, uh, I, we talked a little bit about recycled water. The recycled water treatment uh, typically uh, will, will remove all of those contaminants so we don't have any of those issues when it comes to indirect potable reuse or the potential for direct potable reuse. Uh, but we do have contamination issues with our groundwater in certain locations. Uh, sometimes uh, there are portions of LA County that have uh, a lot of uh, industrial water use. So utilizing wellhead treatment to treat uh, our groundwater supplies does uh, provide those protections and also a uh, cheaper and uh, energy uh, savings uh, water solution here in Southern California. Thank you. By the way, I will just stop sharing my screen because it will enable you to see also the other participants if they turn off their camera instead of having this big picture uh, right in front of you all. Um, so I have another question for you, EJ, coming from the public. Uh, this question was, um, do you maybe for the, well, actually there are two questions. Uh, so for the coming two, three years, what kind of uh, possibilities do you see for maybe for small scale water solutions to save and reuse water in community? And can they, yeah, what extent can uh, parties uh, uh, participate, participate in that? So well, I think there are uh, 
a lot of opportunity for uh, small water systems, especially uh, more in, in the Central Valley uh, of the state of California. Uh, but one of the things I tried to highlight in one of my earlier slides was just the diverse uh, regional needs of the Metropolitan Water District Service Area. And as I mentioned, uh, the water supply solutions that would take place and be very helpful in the West Basin Service Area are not always applicable to our inland partners and our southern partners. Uh, some areas have storage, some areas have recycled water opportunities, some areas have desalination. So I implore all of the, the guests here today and all of those uh, participants to really look at the individual agency to find that perfect match for the individual business that you do. Uh, obviously, uh, I've talked a little bit about technology. The advancements in technology will get us to that next level. Uh, but depending on your technology, you're going to want to shop for the right agency and the right uh, small community to really partner with. Thank you. Um, Yo, know, you also actually prepared questions for for the audience, because um, you said like the Los Angeles water governance can sometimes be confusing with many regional public agencies, big and small. And how can do how can the public sector do a better job of communicating business opportunities? with small businesses and international businesses. So this is actually a question to the audience, which is an open question. Um, I don't know, maybe one of the participants can, if they have an idea of, of how, or like a question on um, how the public sector can do a better job of communicating these business opportunities, then you can raise your hand. Um, that's a small button you have to, Raise your hand uh, button here. Am I right? Can somebody confirm whether there's a raise your hand button on this in this program? <laughs> Is that... yes. Okay, great. <laughs> then I know. <laughs> Sometimes you get confused with uh, different programs that I'm using. Yeah. So if you uh, think you, yeah, uh, you have an idea on that, please raise your hand. So. Um, you can come back to EG with some suggestions on how this uh, public se sector can do a better job in communicating business opportunities to, to US firms or other types of organizations. Um, as long as we don't get um, like a reaction on that, uh, I will ask another question to EG. Um, <laughs> I'd be happy to elaborate on that question. Oh, yes, please. Just, uh, I know sometimes uh, being on these uh, virtual meetings, it's hard to ask questions, uh, but I will tell you that um, if you look at that, one of the, my initial slides that identifies all the Metropolitan Water District uh, service area and the member agencies, one of the primary uh, drivers as far as uh, alerting the business community and international business community of opportunities is what we call our bid network. And if you go to any website of those member agencies, and I would encourage you to go to the West Basin one as well, uh, because I, I'm more familiar with it. But if you go to that uh, website, you can actually click on a button that says doing business with West Basin. You can be anywhere in the world, you click there and you would enter uh, a little bit about your business, whether it's data analysis, uh, data collection, or, or engineering, uh, energy usage, any of those things. You can actually uh, uh, put that together and anytime a business opportunity from West Basin uh, is introduced through what we call request for a quote or request for a proposal, you'll actually receive an email notification and that'll allow you to submit a, a proposal from anywhere around the world. So I'm sure most agencies have it. I know the bid network that we utilize is a contract software that a lot of agencies, including Metropolitan Water District, utilizes. So I would encourage you all to, to take a few minutes and maybe familiarize yourself with some of the websites of these member agencies and see if there's an opportunity for you to input your information and, and find the perfect opportunity for your business. Thank you, AJ. Maybe later it will be uh, possible to share that information so we can uh, also share it with the participants. Uh, if you have a direct link, you can also put it in the chat for them to see. Um, would you also maybe, uh, be able to elaborate a bit more on the other uh, point that you made about the Los Angeles County Passion Measure W uh, for the Clean Water Program. So yes, uh, 
So as I mentioned in 2018, 2018, uh, LA County voters supported this uh, measure. It's actually a property tax based off of uh, the square footage of your property. So it's an assessment. Uh, that money is accumulated by the county. And as I mentioned, it's, it's roughly $300 million per year for uh, stormwater projects, which is significant. But the one aspect that I find the most fascinating is the division of those uh, dollars. So 50% of the funds generated are for what we call regional stormwater programs and projects. Again, it's multiple uh, municipalities. You're looking for uh, uh, disadvantaged communities and trying to find these uh, perfect projects. But for smaller businesses that maybe have uh, different innovations and, and ideas about how to assist a community, uh, each of the municipalities is actually provided uh, roughly uh, a portion of what they actually paid. So as I mentioned, it's 50% for regional, 40% of the 300 million uh, goes directly to the municipalities. So all of those cities, and we have a lot of them here in Southern California. Uh, we, I live in Redondo Beach, and I know that Hermosa Beach is actually one square mile. So it's a very small beach community. As such, they have very limited resources, very small staff, and they rely primarily on consultants to help them identify stormwater projects. And again, this is a, a $300 million initiative that is in perpetuity, meaning it does not end. So at this point in history, we'll, we'll see that $300 million every single year. So these municipalities will have significant funding for stormwater projects in the future. Thank you. Thank you for elaborating. And I think this is also an interesting topic um, for the participants, at least for me <laughs> also. Um, yeah, because of the time, and the time flies, and you guys have to start today, um, I just want to start two more small polls just to get an idea about um, the, the audience, whether or to what extent they, uh, or which topics they would like to receive more information. I just started the poll. Uh, on what topics uh, discussed um, do you want to or like to see um, or would like to know more? So we can bear that in mind for the next uh, uh, webinar or maybe to yeah, organize an extra meeting. I hope you can all see it. And next time I will extend maybe a bit of time because somehow I got two responses. Oh no, time is still running. You can still answer. <laughs> okay. I'll just wait three more seconds. All right, so I hope you can now also see the uh, results of this uh, the topic. And then I'll have one more question for you just have to save this small results next time okay. right because uh, this is actually my last question is whether you are interested in sharing your notes or your contact details because uh, then we can share that afterwards with all the other participants please uh, let us know if you want to share your contact details with the participants here to later have some contact. I think this is a more easy question than the last question because I see a lot more answers, so that's good. Or maybe you're getting used to it, which is also a good point. Okay, a couple more seconds. Let's see 16 responses, three, one. Right. Thank you. I will not show these results because we will provide them later afterwards for you. Um, yeah, so actually this was uh, a webinar. I'm, I'm just going to go back to uh, just some uh, last closing remarks. Uh, first of all, um, well, as the USA team, we're also uh, one of the big events in the water world in the USA is also the WEFTEC. Um, a big um, yeah, exhibition and also a conference, uh, as may some of you know, 
uh, changing from Chicago one year and then New Orleans the other year. Uh, this year, uh, website goes virtu virtual. This so for the Dutch uh, organizations. We are looking into participate participating in this um, yeah new virtual WebTech. And we're talking with the organization of WebTech and how to be involved in several sessions. So if you're interested in um, being part of this or wanting to know more, please uh, contact me as well. Let me check. Oh, and then I will have to share my uh, slides again. So in case you want to stay in contact with us, um, these are the, uh, this is the team that has organized this webinar. So it's our USA team from the Netherlands Water Partnership, uh, our economic, uh, Jan Top from the Consulate General in San Francisco, and our uh, MBSO in LA. Uh, we will share this slide so you can feel free to contact them. And of course, you can also uh, get the contact details of our presenters, because I think it's really great, uh, e.g. Grace and Gail, that you were here uh, to present about your companies and your work. Um, and yes, I think um, that's it for now. So if you have any any questions, any uh, last remark, um, yeah, please feel free to uh, to share them. Um, all the questions here um, will be put into uh, well, well, we'll give answers to it, and we will share that also with the slides. Um, I see also some of you already uh, putting their information in the chat. Uh, we will leave the chat open for another, let's say five to 10 minutes. Uh, if you still want to exchange something or want to ask something and uh, else feel free uh, to leave and uh, hope to see you another time in one of the webinars or hopefully uh, physically somewhere in the US or in Canada.